Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have yet another Star Lego Star Wars, the new Yoda Chronicles Escape from the Jedi Temple. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is a series of shorts. They're about 24 minutes long, and uh, this one's from 2014 as well. They're all individual episodes, but they all connect together with an overarching storyline, uh, and they take place so far uh, between the very end of Star Wars and the very beginning of Empire Strikes Back. Two days ago, we watched the um, Duel of the Skywalkers, uh, and that was happening just before Empire. This one happens in, like, probably minutes, hours, days, I don't know, right after the end of the original Star Wars film, Episode Four. Uh, they're celebrating the destruction of the Death, of the Death Star, and, uh, well, they think everything's fine. Again, not canon. It's okay. So, uh, this is actually also the first in the series. I wondered which one was the beginning. Uh, well, this one is it. This one tells the story, and uh, it sets the foundation for the episodes to come. So, if you're going to watch any of these, you want to watch this one first. The Yoda, the New Yoda Chronicles, uh, because it not only does it uh, set Luke's uh, story arc, the, the search for the hol holocrons. Oh, I forgot to show you. Holocron. So, yeah. Let's see. Let me show you. Oh, there we go. I'm using my Jedi power powers. Jeez. You're noisier than I remember. Okay. Okay. Alright, fine. Yeah. He's got to find those. But in Lego form, obviously. Um, <laughs> so, but the, in order to set him on this path, uh, we get Yoda with Ghost Obi-Wan hanging out for the first time, I, I guess, technically. And, and they're roasting marshmallows and having chats about the old days. And they talk about how, man, remember that time that uh, we went on a mission just before we, no, right after we dropped the kids off at, you know, the different planets? Remember when we got together with Bail Organa and a bunch of random Padawans that we uh, that didn't get killed by Anakin uh, that were on the Outer Rim? Uh, let's say we remember that time that we all got together and we rescued them. We went into the Jedi Temple and retrieved all the Jedi holocrons so they could not be used uh, by the Emperor. And yeah, well. <laughs> That's an adventure that takes place literally right after Revenge of the Sith. So we're getting a lot of connecting pieces here. And again, not canon, but still great fun. And you can kind of imagine that this kind of stuff would happen. And also you kind of get some answers to some things like... After seeing somebody die, wouldn't the ghost of somebody you just saw die freak you out just a little bit? Sure, Luke heard Ben's voice in his ear to tell him to use the Force when he was an X-Wing, but what if Ben showed up right in front of him? How would he react? And also, my favorite part, my favorite part of this, is Anthony Daniels as C-3PO after having his mind wiped. Yes. At the very end of Revenge of the Sith, they Bail Organic commanded that uh, the protocol droid have his mind wipe, wiped. What kind of personality would he have after that? Would it really just default to I'm a protocol droid and I communicate in over six million different languages? Not necessarily. So uh, I actually laughed out loud for a number of these things. And for once, uh, it wasn't the Emperor that was leading all the crazy funny stuff. He was, but he's he's definitely in this but uh, it's not just him and here he is hanging out in the jedi temple watching some greatest hits holocrons uh <laughs> it turns out it's not as easy to get them out as i thought but uh yeah it, there's a bunch of little interactions throughout this but uh, if you're gonna watch it for any reason it's to see anthony daniels play a very very different c-3po mm. so yeah yeah, I, I, I'm glad I saw this. It's weird. I, I, I just checked, and we've now seen four, 
four of the last nine days have been Lego Star Wars. <laughs> if you didn't really come here for that kind of thing, I'm sorry, but it's random, except for the Terrifying Tales, which I chose uh, myself on purpose uh, around just before Halloween. But I don't, I don't choose the random uh, numbers, so it just happens that way. But I'm glad it did. I'm really enjoying these. I'm really, in <laughs> especially after Roly Poly Oli which wasn't funny or interesting. Sorry. But <laughs> I'm not also not three years old. This is just great fun uh, for, for Star Wars fans, especially. And little kids and adults will enjoy it all the same, especially if you do love Star Wars. If you don't, it, you won't get 99% of the references, uh, but you can still enjoy toys being weird. That's pretty much what this is, toys being weird. In a galaxy far, far away. But, <laughs> but yeah, I highly recommend these. These are getting better each time I watch them. And now I'm, I'm watching them all out of order, but that's nothing new. So here you go. At least you now know which one to start with. So, let's pick tomorrow's episode. Maybe it won't be a Lego Star Wars. 242. Oh my God. Okay. It's not because it's... But it's still in the 200s. <laughs> this one, I'm not sure if it's still on Disney+. Plus. I'm going to have to check that. But I'm not going to drag this out just in case it's not. If it's not on, I'll be right back in a second. But we're going to watch Inspector Gadget 2. Yes. Is it Matthew Broderick? Is he back? Did he come back for the sequel? I don't recall. I mean, I, just, I think I only saw Inspector Gadget, the original on Disney Plus a long time ago when we first started out. So, uh, yeah, we'll see, you can see that in one of my older episodes when I sat on the couch, I think. I don't know. I can't remember. But Inspector Gadget 2 on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.